Philippine Vice President Lenny Robredo doubles down on lambasting China for its unsanctioned incursions in the West Philippine Sea. Ako alam mo, um, while the tone is unnecessary and unfortunate, hindi na ako nagulat. Uh, the message is actually expected kasi ganun naman, di ba? After all, governments are expected to assert their nation's interests. Even if sometimes nga, they have to bend logic in the process. In the rare video statement, she also throws shade at President Rodrigo Duterte himself for failing to defend national sovereignty. Pero yung sa akin kasi personal, sana all. Uh, sana yung gobyerno natin willing din na magpakita ng konting tapang regarding the issue. Pag interest na ng sariling bansa natin, dapat pumalag tayo. Robredo's comment comes after China's foreign ministry spokesperson Zhao Lijian called the arbitral ruling against Beijing's claim over the West Philippine Sea as illegal, null, and void. This, as the fifth anniversary of the landmark decision on international maritime law, was commemorated on Monday, July 12. Robredo has long been criticizing Duterte for his defeatist position on China's presence in the West Philippine Sea. She once said China's presence in Philippine waters is the most serious external threat since World War II. But Duterte himself downplayed the arbitral victory numerous times in exchange for loans and grants from Beijing. Leaders of labor group Kilosang Mayo Uno or KMU filed formal complaints before the National Bureau of Investigation against online red tagging by state-sponsored social media pages. The group says Wednesday, July 14, the Duterte government, particularly its anti-communist task force NTFLCAC, is the mastermind behind the red baiting and vilification of labor leaders. They file cybercrime complaints related to at least 50 social media posts, red tagging and labeling its leaders as terrorists. KMU Secretary General Jerome Adonis adds, Red tagging has become a prelude to deaths of some labor leaders like Dan Di Miguel, who was shot and killed in Laguna by unknown assailants. Meantime, an audit of the Philippine National Police shows the police force spent only 11.9% of its 2020 budget for anti-communist programs. Of the 722.9 million pesos it received from the Department of Budget and Management, the PNP just spent 86.57 million pesos. Questions have been raised about the transparency of spending of the anti-communist task force. The Commission on Audit itself admits it will be hard to track where the money goes, especially if funds are categorized under intelligence and confidential spending. How did President Duterte's leadership style change over the course of his presidency? Or did it not change at all? In this episode of Newsbreak, Beyond the Stories podcast, Rappler executive editor Glenda Gloria, Malacanang reporter Pia Ranada, and researcher-writer Jodez Gavilan talk about the last five years under Duterte. Listen on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. The World Health Organization advises against people mixing and matching COVID-19 vaccines from different manufacturers, calling it a dangerous trend since more data is needed about the health impact. It's a little bit of a dangerous trend here. It will be a chaotic situation in countries if citizens start, you know, deciding when and who uh, they should be taking a second or a third or a fourth dose. The WHO Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Vaccines in June said the Pfizer vaccine could be used as a second dose after an initial dose of AstraZeneca if the latter is not available. The results of a further clinical trial led by the University of Oxford that will look at mixing AstraZeneca and Pfizer as well as Moderna and Novavax vaccines is underway. We'll continue to work with public health agencies around the world who are tracking this data. Uh, we will make recommendations on boosters when we think uh, that they are needed. It has to be based on the science and the data, not on individual companies uh, declaring that you know their vaccines should now be uh, administered as a booster dose. The Makati Prosecutor's Office dismisses the slight physical injuries complaint filed against actor Tony Labrusca. The complaint is dismissed on the grounds that it was filed past the two-month prescription period for the offense. The complaint against the actor was filed only June 4, or nearly five months after he allegedly choked a man at a house party on January 16. The actor's lawyer, Georgie Alonso, maintains her client's innocence in an interview with ABS-CBN, even as the complaint was dismissed on a technicality. 
Labruska is also facing a complaint for acts of lasciviousness after he allegedly exposed the woman's chest and forcefully pulled her to sit on his lap on the same night. In K-pop news, NCT member Tail sets a new Guinness World Record for fastest time to reach 1 million followers on Instagram. Guinness World Records announces the news Tuesday, July 13, saying the feat was achieved in just 1 hour and 45 minutes after Tail's first post. Tail created his Instagram account mo.on underscore air last July 6. As of this writing, it now has 1.9 million followers. Tail made his debut under the subunit NCTU in April 2016. He is also part of the NCT 127 subunit. Nominees for this year's Emmy Awards are announced Tuesday, July 13, with a diverse set of newcomers and feel-good TV shows. Best drama series contenders include Netflix's British royal series The Crown for a season that focused on the early years of the disastrous marriage of Prince Charles and Princess Diana. The Crown nabs 24 nominations, including 9 for actors such as Josh O'Connor and newcomer Emma Corrin as the royal newlyweds and Olivia Colman as a middle-aged Queen Elizabeth. Star Wars spin-off drama The Mandalorian, a Disney Plus series that features the beloved Baby Yoda character, ties The Crown with 24 nominations, including Best Drama Series and others for writing and special effects. Bridgerton, Netflix's modern twist on 19th century British romance, gets a Best Drama Series nod, as well as an acting nomination for breakout Black British star Reggae Jean Page. Other notable nods go to a documentary about Britney Spears and to Oprah Winfrey's explosive interview in March with Prince Harry and his wife Meghan about why they quit the royal family in early 2020. Meanwhile, Pose star MJ Rodriguez becomes the first transgender performer to pick up a lead Emmy acting nomination for her role in the LGBTQ drama series. Crime story Mare of East Town starring Kate Winslet and British rape drama I May Destroy You starring and created by Michaela Cole will face off her best limited series against chess drama The Queen's Gambit and harrowing slavery tale The Underground Railroad. Marvel's innovative superhero dramedy WandaVision, which streamed on Disney+, Plus, scored 23 nominations that include stars Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen. The Emmy Awards will be handed out at a ceremony in Los Angeles on September 19. The Emmys are considered the highest TV honors in the world. 